Ted McFaul from McFaul Bee Yard. Uh, right now we're in Texas, and I just wanted to show you the kind of problem that wax moths are up here. Um, of course, I live in the uh, Pacific Northwest where um, there are wax moths, but it's not quite as uh, big of an issue as it as it is down here. Um, we're going to throw away this uh, this equipment, and I wanted to show you the way that the, the frames are torn up by the wax moth uh, cocoons. You can see. Um, these are actually uh, you see this little fella? That's that's a that's a wax moth. That's one of the uh, that's one of the wax moth pupil that got ripped out of the um, out of the out of his little his little uh, cocoon there. So what happens is you have a a wax moth that will um, find a weak hive or a hive that uh, perhaps someone added uh, a, a extra deep too early, and so there's too much space for the bees to protect. And so you have a wax moth that'll fly in. Uh, lay eggs. The eggs turn into larvae. The larvae crawl around, uh, eating wax. They don't slime the uh, the hive the, the way the small hive beetle will, but they're they're still nasty little little larvas. And they'll um, and also bees will chase away the uh, the wax moth larva. And for some reason they don't chase away the uh, small hive beetle larva. But uh, what happens is the larvae end up finding a place to pupate along the uh, along the the wood frame. And they burrow a cocoon, and they actually tear up the frames to make that cocoon. So I was showing you these uh, these uh, indentions here. Let's see, this one's not too indention, but um, see, these are like some old some old indentions here. Um, and actually, um, they will end up um, making. I mean, or sometimes they will make a, a a hole all the way through the wood. Sometimes the uh, indentions are, are deeper than others. But here you can see like the little. The little uh, pupas that were inside it just tearing up your uh, tearing up your frames. Um, so that is another pest that, that beekeepers have to deal with. It's not a fun kind of thing to deal with. And actually, you can see like the uh, the webbings and stuff. They they've been working on that. And actually, all this is uh, is wax moth wax moth uh, damage. You see like uh, like the webbing and stuff. Um, I mean, this particular equipment was going to get pitched anyway. So. Uh, you know, my my papa, he didn't mind uh, he didn't mind you know this stuff getting destroyed. But um, and actually, these, he has kind of some interesting frames here. The, the uh, communication corners are are, uh, are circular. You know, I guess you don't see that too often. This type of a, a foundation. But uh, anyway, it's definitely a, a problem. And uh, the the problem varies in different areas. Like I said, Pacific Northwest is a problem. But here in uh, East Texas, you really got to throw your stuff uh, throw. Uh, uh, moth crystals on your on your frames or else your wax is going to get eaten up pretty quick uh, But uh, it's important to remember that it's actually moth crystals not moth balls So for example during the winter time you want to take a sheet of newspaper throw it on your hive take uh, Moth crystals and throw that on top of the newspapers and that'll keep the wax moth out um, Pacific Northwest is a little bit more forgiving you have a little bit more time since there's fewer fewer uh, wax moth but uh, different parts of the country, you really have to make sure you get those uh, moth crystals on them uh, ASAP to protect your wax. Ted McFall from McFall Bee Yard.